Saxon Algebra 1 half, lesson 110. Uh, today, students, we continue our discussion of business math topics. And today, yesterday we talked, well, not yesterday, last time. It was yesterday for me. But it was last time. Excuse me. We talked about interest, simple interest and compound interest, and how much money banks would pay us for borrow for using our money. Today, we are shopkeepers, okay? We are not the shoppers the way we usually are in real life. I don't know that any of you own a retail store. I don't. So we have to change our perspective and become the storekeepers. That will make these problems a whole lot easier. Um, if you try to think of them from the point of view as us being customers, they'll blow your mind. We are shopkeepers. We own the kind of store that sells brands that we don't make. We're not the kind of store that sells our own brand. An example of that kind of store is Abercrombie & Fitch, where one of my daughters works in their home office in Ohio. They don't sell other brands in their stores. They only sell Abercrombie & Fitch merchandise. So their store works a little differently than the kind we're talking about. We're talking about a store like Zoomies, which I hope you know. Zo there isn't really a Zoomies brand, as far as I know. Um, one of my former students works at Zoomies Corporate. And they sell Vans. They sell North Face. They sell The Kind. They sell different brands, and they have to purchase those items, coats, skateboards, shoes, snowboarding clothes, um, they purchase those things from other companies and then they sell them to their customers. So purchase price purchase price is what it costs to buy the merchandise for our store. Okay, that's what we pay to North Face and then they send us a bunch of their jackets that we can sell. It's called the purchase price. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm yawning all of a sudden. It's called the purchase price because it's what we have to pay. We, the shopkeepers, have to pay to purchase the item. It's also sometimes called the wholesale price. Okay, so it can go by either of those names. There's also something called the selling price. That is what we charge our customers. Um, so when someone comes into Zoomies and wants to buy one of our North Face jackets, they won't find the purchase price or the wholesale price on the little tag. They'll find the selling price on the tag. And that's sometimes called the retail price. Okay. Now, these two prices shouldn't be the same because we, the shopkeepers, we need to make money off this, right? If we don't, if we charge the same thing, we're not making any money. So there's a little formula here that says that the selling price equals the purchase price plus what's called a markup. It's usually a percentage. And what we do is we take a certain percentage it can be based on the purchase price or based on the selling price. John will help us with that. But it's a percentage extra that we charge our customers. And this covers the cost of running our store, paying our employees, having insurance, paying a fee to the mall for our space. All of those little extra costs that we, the shopkeepers, have to pay in order to run our store, we have to include something for all of those um, as well as the, the cost of the jacket, say, right, that we had to pay from North Face. We have to pay North Face back, and then we have to pay all of our little expenses, and we put both of those 
we add them together to determine what our selling price is, okay? So that is how we price. How we set our prices. Okay, now sometimes we have merchandise, we we buy it, we calculate a markup, we determine the selling price, we put it on the floor, we leave it there for a while, see how it goes, and you know it always happens that some things just don't sell. So, sometimes we have sales, and this is how we take our, we do our sales prices. We take the selling price and we subtract what we call a discount. And that will equal the sale price. This, as you know, if you've shopped, is usually a percent too. Take 40% off all tops on this rack, right? 60% off all jeans, that would be a really good one. Um, Okay, so we can we use these. Sometimes the discount is called the mark down. Okay, so there we have the mark up and the mark down that we're talking about. Now, what's confusing about these problems is that we have a lot of terms that we're not used to, and we have percents for a mark up and percents for a mark down. So what we have to do is take a minute to understand these two processes, and then we have to take our frickin' formula as a percent, we have to recognize that sometimes our percents are going to be greater, and sometimes they're gonna be less. We have to be ready for anything, and we have to take all this into each problem and really think it through. That's the only thing I'm hard about these. The math is easy. The only thing that's hard is we just have to keep our wits about us. Look, last page. Woohoo! that's exciting, right? Okay. First problem, there are one, two, three. And I'm gonna write here, selling price equals purchase price plus the mark up. And I'm going to write sale price. I'm not going to put SP because that's selling price. Equals the selling price minus the mark down or discount. Okay, here we go. Mr. Franklin bought new dresses for $40 each. Okay, we're assuming Mr. Franklin is the shopkeeper. He bought the dresses for $40 each. So that is the purchase price. $40. The, he marked each dress up 150%. Markup equals 150% of the purchase price. What was the price he charged his customers? Okay, I'm also going to write the freaking formula up here because that's the tool we're gonna to use for these problems. Because of the percents, we can use these really nicely. Okay, if we start and say, okay, let's start with our purchase price and then find the selling price, right? This is the purchase, I'm gonna write it out just so you don't have to keep deciphering. This is the purchase price and this is the selling price, which equals the purchase price price plus the markup. Okay, so 